I look like a vicar in this shirt. Happy Blue Day, everybody. I feel like now is the perfect time to revisit that old snobbish rant about folks who can only play Wonderwall. But by extension, I'm very sorry to inform you that if you can't play Wonderwall, then you don't know how to play the guitar. That was a joke. I'm sure there are dozens, if not hundreds of billions of people on YouTube who have taught you to play Wonderwall. So as I was thinking about making this video, of course I wondered what can I bring to this conversation. So I was looking around YouTube for some live versions and I came across one by Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds, his solo band, right? I will link to that in the description so you can listen to it. Uh, and in that video, he does a few, not a whole lot, but definitely very tasty things. So I thought in this video, it would be fun to pour through that performance and show you said tasty things that you can add to your repertoire, even if you already know how to play, know how to play the guitar. Without any further ado, here we go with How to Play Wonderwall for Michelle Pendergrass, Fraser Marsden, Cowboy USA, and the fake NGX. Firstly, put your capo on the third fret, or if you don't have a capo, don't use a capo, that's fine. Or put your capo on any fret that works with your voice if you're going to be the one singing this song. Here's the thing about Wonderwall that makes it a song people often learn early in their guitar careers. We're going to take our pinky and ring fingers and put them on baby E3 and B3. Those are not going to move through the whole verse. From there, take your pointer finger and put it on the A string second fret. This is our E minor seven chord, and let's use this strumming pattern. For now, it's a little simplified, but perfect for going through it. Down, 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 down. Our next chord is G, so all you have to do is take your middle finger and plop it on the E string third fret there. That's not very much to do at all. Same strumming pattern. Our next chord is D suspended 4, which sounds more complicated than it is. All we do is lose our pointer and middle fingers and replace your pointer finger on the G string 2nd fret. Only strum 4 strings for that chord. And now A7 suspended 4, which sounds way more complicated than it is. Your pointer finger is just going to jump one string up towards the ceiling. When you repeat, your pointer finger just does that same move, jumping up one string towards the ceiling, and we are back to our E minor 7. Watch my pointer finger. A string, middle finger, G string, D string. Now there are two ways to do this verse. They're very similar, but a little bit different, and now let's do the second way. All right, we've got our E minor 7 chord how we had it, but let's add our middle finger to the D string 2nd fret. You'll now recognize that as your regular E minor chord plus the stuff that isn't moving. This is more correct. The other way is great too. G is just as easy to get to. D remains the way it was. But for the A7 suspended 4, doing this doesn't even change the name of it. We're going to do our regular D string 2nd fret, but just like the E minor chord, add the middle finger to now the G string 2nd fret. Noel would use this one or this one in the performance I was referencing. is you should mix and match there and do whatever you want both or some combination are just great but here's a nuance I highly enjoyed from the high flying birds performance the first two chords are exactly the same so our E minor our G but on the D he goes to do the whole regular thing but adds his thumb to the E string second fret that makes it a D with an F sharp in the bass and what we're gonna hear out of the E string now is listen for it same, but here's how I saw him handle it sometimes, and this might be easier for you. Middle finger goes to the D string 2nd fret, everything else stays exactly where it is, and there's no difference in that, but the thing is, when you go to switch back to the E minor, your pointer finger is going to do a leapfrog, and everything else is going to stay the same, so it's arguably less moving around. I don't like it, but you might like it. tasty thing for you. First of all, never underestimate the power of the old backwards strum. 
then from this G chord, he's going to take his pinky finger and pull it off of the E string 3rd fret as he moves into a regular D chord. So you hear the happen on the baby E string like this. And on the 3rd strum of that D, he's going to pull his pointer finger off of the G string as he moves into his A7 suspended 4. So... Of course, the point of all this is you should feel licensed to do any of these things whenever you feel like it, whenever that chord comes up. Another thing he does is he walks from the E minor chord to the G chord via the E string 2nd fret. Right before he starts singing, he plays a C add 9 chord, which is just like your G chord, but take your middle and your pointer fingers and move them one string towards the floor this time. And then we're going to the D chord, the one we've been using the whole time, but he's going to hammer on the G string this time. And then pull back off as he goes to land on his A7 suspended 4 chord. You can hammer on the D string now and pull off. pull off to your heart's content. He hangs out doing that for a little bit before he starts in with the verse. And now you already know the ingredients for the verse, so I don't have to show you anything, but that C add 9, D to A thing is also the end tag to the verse, but he throws the F sharp in the base of the D as well. About you now. So we've hit that A7 suspended 4 and it's ringing out and we're going to go into the next verse but this time he pulls off the G string and then the D string before he proceeds to the next verse. So... And so on. All the roads we have to walk, it's C at 9 and then D with the F sharp in the bass if you want. And then our E minor chord. Again. But there are many things that I would like to say to you are C, the D, and then we're gonna go to the G and we're gonna walk the E string, third fret, second fret into our E minor, back to our G chord, and then our A7 suspended four chord. So. I said maybe C at 9, our E minor chord, G, back to the E minor chord, back and forth, back and forth, C, E, G, E, but the last time, I'm on after all here, in my head, you're on my wonder wall, here we go, to our G and do the walk down the E string, 3, 2, E minor, you could play the D, but I don't know, that's a lot of trouble for me when it's that quick. After that dramatic landing, he does an equally dramatic but more subtle hang on our A chord before he goes into the next verse, which of course does not happen on the album version. And that's all I could squeeze out of that performance, so the only thing left to say is, let's say you're jamming with your buddies, I mean, what could be better than 17 guitar players all playing the same open chords, and someone wants to take care of do-do-do-do-do. I've got my capo on the third fret, so if yours is somewhere else, adjust accordingly, but I'm gonna go to the B string, actual 16th fret, not relative to the capo, and go 16, 15, 16, E string, 18, 15. Or if you can't reach that because you don't have a cutaway or you're playing capo 7 or something, relative the capo down here or down wherever, it's B string 
one, open one, E string, three, open. And that is it for Noel Gallagher Live Acoustic Style Wonderwall. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that was fun and helpful, and I will see you next time with more stuff. Goodbye.